the new advances on cruises, like Royal Caribbean's Bionic Bar. Ah, you know, I suppose it might be good for some techno freaks. Uh, me, I like to go up to a barman and say, and him to say, Hi Nick, how are you doing? What, you going to have your usual? And I'd say, yeah, please, that would be nice, Jimmy, you know, and uh, do that. To me, the reason you go on a cruise is to meet other people and have a bit of a nice time. And uh, I have to say, during my time, I loved the people. The, the people were the whole thing. And it, was, it always gave me great pleasure to walk around the ship um, every morning or every afternoon, at least once a day, including the crew areas, and just talk to people. How important do you think tipping is? There are all-inclusive ships that include tips. So if you don't want to pay tips, go for a shipping company, that uh, cruise line, that doesn't include tips. And they all say that on their policy and that you know plenty of time in advance. Dare I say it, the Brits are probably the worst. Uh, America is a part of the culture there. Um, Australia don't tip. Um, the wages that the crew get paid, um, on many occasions they rely on tips. And that's actually just the same as it is when you go for a meal here in a restaurant. When you're on a ship for five, six, seven, ten days, the end result can be quite a hefty chunk onto your bill, whereas if you do it a little bit by little bit, you don't notice it so much. It would be lovely in the ideal world if you were able to say uh, no tipping. Then you'd have to put up the wages of all the staff to compensate for that. And to do that, you have to put up the price of the ticket and uh, people don't want to pay the higher price for the ticket, they'll always go for the lower option. So I can understand that it's controversial and uh, does cause a lot of ill feelings and uh, I don't think it's going to go away quickly. Does prepaying tips defeat the point of tipping someone for good service? I think they do the prepaid to make it kind of easier for the guests so that they know and it's done and that they can budget for it. They're able to say, right, I know what I've done now, I know what money I need. So I think prepaid is quite a good idea. Um, but you've always got the option, if you're not happy with the service or anything that you've received on board, you can take it off. So the option is there. Should every cruise line have a set price? Would you want everybody to charge the same for the cruise? You know. The world's full of different people and none may be that way, um, whether it be even the different personalities of the people that travel or the different cruise ships. Some offer better facilities, some are newer, more modern, got better things. So it's all different and I think that's a good thing. That, uh, and it's good for competition too. If you had it all the same, they don't say, well, I'm, I'm just charge whatever you want. You know, we're all going to be the same, so you're probably your level of service might not be um, as keen as it would be if everybody's allowed to be individual. Should cruisers who dislike paying grats book cheaper cruises? Well, if you go for the cheapest lines, then you'll get the cheapest service. You know, and, and uh, although that service could still be very good, it will not be as good as the more expensive ones, and that's just a fact of life. Mm -hmm. When I buy a car, you know, there's two types of cars, and, well, hundreds of types, but you can buy a cheap one that'll maybe get you home, and you can buy an expensive one that'll uh, impress your neighbours. You know. What's your opinion of passengers smoking on balconies? My personal opinion is I would ban smoking altogether in the entire universe. Now that's not to say I was a smoker and I gave up about 25 years ago I suppose and it was the best thing I ever did in my life. However, if people are smokers, people are smokers and I would say that if you can find your smoker to your balcony, that's okay because people have got to smoke if they're smokers. It's their habit and their way. Um, but you would not want them into the cabin because no matter what you say, the smoke will linger and then when the next lot of guests come on board, it's there, it's in the fabric of the, of the cabin furniture. So if you've got a balcony, if you're lucky enough to have a balcony, go outside and I would say that's fine. Otherwise you've got the open deck spaces. That's not always so easy because if you're going across the North Atlantic and it's a 10 gale, you can't stand outside because uh, it will blow your cigarette away. So uh, that can have difficulty. Uh, but there are, generally speaking, there are sections and areas. And you know, people do it at home. You should look at pubs. I would have said two years ago, there would be twice, three times as many people sitting outside the pub having a quick cigarette. Now, there's not so many. It still happens, but there's not so many. People are getting used to it now. And they get used to, well, I can do without a cigarette for a couple of hours while I chat to my friends and have a pint, you know. And, and I think, uh, being a, an occasional public house frequenter, that to go into a pub nowadays and have the atmosphere so nice and clean and friendly, lovely. 
Are you a fan of formal nights or do you think the cruises should scrap them? Absolutely a fan of the formal nights. Would you like the crew to walk around a pair of jeans and a pair of flip flops, you know, and a t-shirt? You know, no you wouldn't. All ships will say what the dress code is. So they'd say that there's two formal nights, but well, usually with the first night, the first day at sea, and then the second, uh, the last time is before the end of the cruise, formal nights. That's it. It's you're told, and people love to dress up. The vast majority, you will get the obvious comment: these jeans cost more than that uh, dinner suit cost. Why should I be allowed to wear that? That's not the rule. That's not what it's about. It's about looking smart, looking and being together as a, a dress code. Uh, sadly, uh, some people just like to go against the grain and create a bit of a scene, a bit of a fuss. And if you don't like dressing up, go on a cruise ship that doesn't dress up. There are plenty of them out there. Do you think cruise lines should introduce more than two formal nights? Not everybody wants to dress up. And nowadays with flying restrictions, how are you going to get uh, six ball gowns into your suitcase and you're flying down to wherever it is to join the ship? So there, there has to be a balance. Somewhere. So I think twos, two is absolutely plenty and it's enough for everybody. Do you like the general direction the cruises are heading in? The simple answer is yes, because they're giving much more to the passengers. There's been talk about doing away with uniforms and uh, having, uh, like the hotel manager, not been having a, um, having a suit rather than, uh, you know, the talk about captains maybe not having a uniform. There's talk about um, the captain not necessarily being brought up through the marine side, but maybe it could be uh, from the technical side, and he's got a will to control. I think those sort of changes are not, I wouldn't be in favour of that at all. I wouldn't want um, a navigator to be in charge of the engine room, for example. He might be a good administrator, but you need to know a little bit about and be brought up with that background. Same as I wouldn't necessarily like a technical man running the bridge because captains are historically brought up that way and there's a lot of uh, handed down knowledge almost from father to some type of um, information going on that you're familiar with. Uh, yeah, but things are continuing evolving and as, as is life the, the, on the bridge, the equipment on the bridge nowadays is absolutely staggering. I mean it is from when I first went off to sea as I'm using a section to navigate and if you wanted to do anything everything was manual. Nowadays almost everything is automatic. Either automatic or just push a button and uh, it'll all take care for you. And especially with regards to safety and firefighting. The technology in the bridge is, um, when I first went onto the new ships I just thought it was unbelievable. And it takes a wee bit getting your head around it, but it's good for everybody. And then of course for the entertainment aboard the ship um, things are advancing there. I mean, it used to be in the older days uh, when they brought on the, the showgirls, for example, that we danced before, so there'd be three girls that were wearing a wee feather stuck out of their ear and they would go on the stage and run around for a few minutes. Now, there are big 20, 30 people production shows that you would get in any London theatre. And these are fabulous. I mean, they just are staggeringly good and uh, give great entertainment. And, of course, the entertainers themselves.